I'm Bridget Rivera. I'm the Director of Digital Marketing at Lumen, and I'm joined today by Dan Lee, who is our Director of Teaching and Learning for Math and Natural Sciences, right, Dan? Um, so right. he, um, I'm going to share actually our agenda. Oops, not share, just kidding. Do that. You can see my screen. Hopefully you can see it now. Um, so thanks for joining us today for this Getting Started with Lumen. So I just want to go over quickly over our agenda, what we're going to cover today, just to make sure that you're in the right place, since we know time is precious as always, but especially right now. So we want to make sure that you are in a, you know, the next 40 minutes or so are going to be covering things you're interested in and care about. Um, so we're going to quickly go over who Lumen Learning is, um, just in case you hadn't heard of us before. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the course we have available for both math and chemistry and also for our social sciences, just like a slide on each so you know what, you know, what's available in case you want to share with colleagues. And then we're going to spend the majority of our time in our courseware demonstration, which Dan will be doing. Um, so you'll get to see OM and part of that will be looking and or seeing how you can review courses, how easy it is to select them and to set up. Um, and then I will be sharing some links where you can get additional help from, all, from Lumen, but also external links that we've curated to help people who are moving their courses online during this busy time. And of course, Q&A, but we're gonna keep that open throughout the whole session, so feel free to jump in. Um, if for whatever reason your audio starts getting wonky or something's going on and you have to mute yourself, feel free to use the chat. I will be monitoring that for questions or comments as Dan is presenting. Um, as I mentioned, the webinar will be focused, or maybe I didn't, but the webinar will be focused specifically on our courseware for quantitative courses for math and chemistry, which is OM, our online homework manager. We do support the following learning management systems, um, Blackboard, Canvas, D2L, or Brightspace, and Moodle. Um, but the good thing with OM, too, is that you don't need to use it in the LMS. If you don't want to, you can use it on its own, and it has its own separate login, so we'll show you both of those options. As you can imagine, our training and support is focused on our courseware. Um, the reason I point this out is we've had some of these webinars where questions come up about LMS capabilities and things that really are best left, questions that are best left for your college or LMS admin. So we'll do our best to answer any and all questions based on what we know and have experienced in, but some of them may be more appropriate for your institution or LMS administrators. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in um, and just have a few slides before we get into the demonstration. Uh, just a little bit about Lumen. We started in 2012 and we grew out of a Gates Foundation funded grant project. Um, since then, we've had our digital courseware, so OM and our other one, which is Waymaker, used by over 2,000 faculty members at over two, 350 institutions. Um, in 2019, just some numbers, um, we saved 260,000 students more than $30 million, so we're really proud of that. Um, and our content has been accessed by 75 million independent learners in just last year alone. Um, that includes content in our courseware, like you'll see today, but also the content that's available on our website, which at any time you or your colleagues can go to our website, look at our courses, and you'll see all the content that we have available. And it's all openly available for people to use or look at or whatever you want to do with it, link to it. Um, so that, you know, we're really proud of these numbers and we're excited to, you know, work with more faculty and grow these. So what we do specifically and what's different about us. So first we use evidence-based learning design in everything we do. So we do curate and sometimes create content that's OER, which I'll get to in a couple bullets. Um, and and also courseware like OM or Waymaker, which is another courseware option. So anytime we do that, whether it's content or technology, we do use learning, um, evidence-based learning design. So we do things like we know students learn by doing. So we put practice activities, not just in our coursework, but also in our content that's openly available. We build for accessibility. We know this is very important, obviously, for students to succeed, uh, for all students to succeed. So everything we do, we keep accessibility at the forefront. We seamlessly embed in the LMS. We know that you know, many institutions require instructors and students to work in the LMS, so we wanna make this as easy as possible for both instructors and students. So we built and embed everything easily into the LMS as you'll be able to see. We do use and continuously improve OER content. So a lot of other organizations use OER content, which is great, right? Everyone's contributing a little bit to that. OER, if you're not familiar, is Open Education Resources. 
Um, what's unique about us is that we not just use it, but we don't just use it, but we also continuously improve it. So we have a team that's dedicated to looking at the content, how students are performing in the courseware around specific learning objectives and working and to update and improve the content over time. So we do this on a monthly basis on various courses um, and I'm happy to share more or add you to our mailing list if you are interested in that. And finally, we provide outstanding faculty support. Um, uh, usually I feel like people, you know, Rightfully so, from years ago, had a misconception that if you adopted OER, anything related to OER, you wouldn't have support, you were on your own. So, you know, in order to help instructors and encourage instructors to adopt OER and OER courseware, we do provide outstanding faculty support. So to put it really simply, we have simple to adopt digital courseware in 50 plus high enrollment courses, and we do specifically focus on the gen ed courses because that's where we feel we, have the most, we can have the most impact on helping students is that those are the courses that most students are you know, um, required to take. So as I mentioned, we have two types of courseware. We have our online homework system, which you see on the right side, OM, and we have Waymaker. OM is available for the quantitative courses, so all our math courses as well as chemistry. And our personal and Waymaker is available for humanities, social sciences, biology, and business courses. Um, so they the both courseware options provide OER that's outcome aligned and has frequent practice and feedback built in. Um, Waymaker also provides a personalization tools, so personalized study plans for students, a faculty student connection, a way for um, automated messages to be sent from instructors to students to aid, um, aid that connection as well as those data-driven uh, improvements that I mentioned. Um, normally, typically I should say, our courseware is $25 per student, so no matter which of these options and no matter for which course, um, they're all $25 per course per student. That's our standard pricing, but obviously right now with everything that's going on around us and faculty moving quickly to transition to teaching online, we want to be as helpful as possible. Um, so anyone who's moving their courses online midterm and want to use Lumen Courseware, um, it's available at no cost right now. Hey. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we're, do, we're trying to, you know, help folks, you know, move as quickly as possible right now without adding barriers. So just a few bullets on Lumen Ohm specifically, which we will get into right after this slide. Um, Things that you can expect, um, robust algorithmic assessments, large question libraries, you'll get to see. Um, Dan will demo that. Customizable template courses, so you don't need to start a course from scratch. We have template courses outcome, that are outcome aligned with all the assignments that you need, and you can use them as is, or you can remove content or add your own, whatever you want to do. But basically, this makes it easy for you to get started more quickly. Simple, quick course setup, as you'll see Dan will show. And you're both math instructors, so this applies to both of you. Um, we're really excited about, our part, about having partnered with Desmos um, to provide more interactive graphing capabilities. Um, and we specifically partner with Desmos because their commitment to accessibility is the best that's out there, and obviously we're committed to that too. So we're excited to offer not just interactive graphing, but graphs that are accessible to all students. We use Desmos as well, so good. Oh, great. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to stop there and see if you have any questions about Lumen or, you know, in general before we jump into the live demonstration of OM. If we want to use Lumen, is that taking the place of Connect Math or can we use them together? Typically, uh, OM will be a basically a another alternative to that, so you could replace it. OM is defined as a traditional homework management system and under normal circumstances that, that that would be used as the as the primary system that you would use to assign homework grades everything you normally would have however what Bridget mentioned earlier if you are teaching a course right now in a face-to-face -face environment and no longer have the ability to, be able to interact with students we're offering OM as, as a complementary um, program to assist with your students uh, okay so I will share share my course and let me know if you have any questions throughout we have such a uh, more intimate audience that we have the flexibility to be able to answer questions um, right on the spot right sure because when i when i do research for lumen i notice that they ask for us to log in sometimes do we have to log in 
Well, we have to uh, ask you to create a login for us. How does that work? Uh, yeah, so, so if, you, if, if you're wanting a, a login and something that we'll provide to you at the end of the presentation today, you'll still receive an email from me with your login credentials. Uh, normally, anyone who is interested in, in using uh, OM, when you go to ohm.lumalearning.com, you can always click here on the bottom where it says request an instructor account. And then from there, once you've filled out your credentials, um, our team evaluates to confirm that you are in fact an instructor. Um, and once you have either an uh, identifying factor that shows your email address with the institution, or we've confirmed your, your, your teaching schedule, we can then provide you with access to make sure you can see all of the tools. So, okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna log in um, directly into Elm. And the great thing is you just need one login to be able to access an instructor view, student view, um, or even a TA view. So there's here on the, the left hand side, you'll see all of the different courses that I have in my own instance. However, as Bridget mentioned earlier, we have the luxury of being able to give you courses that we've curated, template courses that have already been established to give you the option to be able to modify or adjust things that you choose to use personally or to build from scratch. And so the, the steps do that would be to click here where it says add new course and I'll make my screen a little bit bigger so you can see. Now say copy a template course. Now we have courses that range from basic math up to calculus. However, we do have courses that we personally made that had the Lumen course template stamp of approval. Uh, and what I mean by that is within our Lumen template courses, you have the ability to have access to courses that have the same consistency and structure, not only with the module alignment, but also have the luxury of being able to have your own instance of a course text. Um, I'll show you an, an example of what that looks like. Um, I'll show you the most current course that we have, our College Algebra Co-Rec course. Um, our QR Co-Rec course is coming out in the next couple of months. Um, we're having a developmental math way maker course that'll be released out later this year. Um, and we have new courses that are in development as well as interactivities that we have in partnership with Desmos that'll be released in the next few months for both intermediate algebra and for stats. But I wanted to, to pause here so you can see that with all of our courses, regardless of whether or not they are a template course or a community course, you can quickly examine and see what are the components of what's inside the course as well as how to easily copy the course itself. From here, I'm going to take one additional step and to, to make sure that I am turning on the new interface. As Bridget mentioned earlier, we're, we're committed to accessibility. One of the biggest changes we had came out last year was an updated interface so that students would be able to um, not fall into any keyboard traps. They wouldn't have to activate any special icons to be able to use any special characters. Um, and also some back-end reporting um, that, we, that we enabled. So I'm gonna move that and click Submit. And I'll say here that I've created the course. And when I enter the course, you can see here that within three clicks, I've been able to successfully create a course that has all the modules pre-made with direct text links and homework assignments, et cetera. So as I, as I go through this, I, I wanna make sure that there's a distinction so you're very clear as to what OM includes. And so if you forget everything else that Bridget and I just explained, just think of OM as being flexible. Flexible enough to be able to get, to, to get you started within a day. Flexible enough to allow you to be able to create your own course template or flexible enough for you to make modifications quickly so you can get started. Uh, but it includes two components. So as I mentioned before, our template courses have interactive text. The, the first component is the content that is directly correlated to the material. So if I clicked on this hyperlink, as I mentioned earlier, each instructor will have their own instance of the course. So let's say for in this college algebra course, before it was a co-rec, let's say you had additional intermediate algebra topics that you wouldn't include or Instead of having a review module on algebra essentials, you wanted to skip this altogether. Everything you see on this page, you could reorder, modify, change naming, or even add your own material if you want. Um, but with 
within each of the uh, modules themselves, we take the time to make sure that we build in interactivity through the reading experience. And so this is still the, 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 the textbook of the course. And built in, you'll see that when students interact with the content, we'll have learning outcomes front and center at the top of the page. And when students scroll down and read the material, they'll have multiple opportunities for them to test for the comprehension. In some cases, it may include uh, an activity where we're asking the student to make a projection to show what that may look like. In other cases, we may embed a YouTube link that has already been closed captioned. In other cases, we may have some algorithmically generated problems that will um, refresh based upon the student activity. In other cases, it just may be a litany of uh, multiple questions that they can just answer time and time again. So I wanna make sure that I pull up an example of one of our algorithmically generated questions like this, where you'll see this icon that says, try another version of this question where they can go through and run through these examples each and every time. I'm gonna pause right there and see, do either of you have any questions just around the, the content components of what we have within our template courses? You know, I've, I've gone through a couple of them to see how, see how they are, because like you were saying that there's some things that, that we don't cover that are in there. But there are some things that we do cover, but they're still incorporated within a module or a page. Can I t you're saying I can actually take that part off? If that's something that uh, is important to you, you, you certainly can. You can give you your own instance of the material so you can remove that content. Another way that you can um, ex exclude the material is built in directly into our course templates. So within our course templates, if you already know that within the, the text for itself, let's say I'm going to this course, let's say that when you're teaching um, exponential and logarithmic equations and models, let's say that you're not covering expanding and condensing logarithms, you're skipping it altogether. In our course templates, we've taken the time to directly hyperlink to those pages. And so for some cases, we have instructors that choose and prefer to only include those hyperlinks to the pages that they're going to be covering and then removing the um, text altogether. The students will answer that book. Uh, in other cases, if it's important for you just to remove that content altogether, you, you have access to your own instance if that's important to you and you can change it. However, we find that most instructors, when they have access to this course right away for the first term, the preference is just to use a course as is and then take either the following term or the following year to take time to make those edits. Does that answer your question, Jesse? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so with that being the, the first component of the content, the, the secondary component is the homework management system. So. Jesse had mentioned earlier, is this going, is this used traditionally alongside with a system like Connect Math or with MyLabs or WebAssign, or can it be used as a supplement? So in, in all cases, we recommend to that, that this platform be used as the primary component of what we normally assign with the course materials. However, as I want to repeat again, during these circumstances, if you aren't already using a homework management system, we're providing complimentary access for this. Now, one of the, the biggest concerns from students is that if they have the ability to be able to successfully work out a problem via pen and paper in your classroom, but when it comes time to complete the problem online, they have frustrations. And so what we've taken the time to do is to address that head on. And what we mean by that is we've designated um, the first student assignment tutorial so that students become familiar with our math palette. And you can see here, how students will interact with material. In some cases, depending upon the problem type, we may open special characters for students to either use their keyboard if they're needing to use a screen reader, or in other cases, select particular icons to make sure they can answer the question correctly. With all of our questions and all of our courses, the beauty of them is that you have the ability to be able to, to, to take an instructor viewpoint and see exactly how things are constructed without having to click in onto each problem. So for example, I'm going to close this module. Let's say that we're in the 13th week of the, of the term, and you're just covering systems of equations and, and inequalities. However, you're, you've just downloaded this course, but you don't have the time to look over all the questions. Like, what do you do? 
Well, this gear icon that I've just selected here, this will be looked at as your options menu. And so when I click on questions, I can see here, what are the questions that have been selected for this problem, for this given assignment? If I wanted to preview the question, I can click preview. It'll show me an example of the problem. I can see here the type of answer that I'll, I'll need. I can click submit and regen and see, is this really an algorithmically generated problem? Is this a problem that will automatically be graded or is this a manually graded question? Now, all of our template courses are gonna have automatically graded questions with direct feedback back to your students. However, we do have the ability for you to be able to identify questions that are outside of this. So as I mentioned before, this assignment has five questions. However, in this course, you may teach it completely different or you may want 10 questions instead. So since we're on, um, uh, in this particular section, let's say that you're wanting to search for polynomials. So I'm just gonna type in polynomials. And I'm gonna search through the entire library. And when I click on this icon, the beautiful thing about Ohm is that because we're built off of openly licensed content, we don't have the traditional copyrights with publishers, for example, you have the ability to search within our entire catalog without any restriction. So here in this column, I can sort by times used and anything tagged with the word polynomials becomes available for me to preview. So if I wanted to take a look at this, I could easily add this. I can move on to the next question. I could see if there is a opportunity for a, an existing hyperlink to a video like this problem and see what the reference is here. However, if I wanted to supplement this with my own video that I've made as a mini lecture or as a reference to this particular problem. Nothing stopping me from taking this problem, looking at the source code of this, for example. And while this is pulling this up, uh, you'll see the coding on the back end and then the ability to be able to replace the existing hyperlink. So some instructors choose to have a, a video that uses a reference. Other instructors, if you want a student to be able to complete a problem and then have a, a PDF that you've created or be referenced to another discussion board, you can do all that with this. So um, still, once again, uh, emphasizing the flexibility of OM and giving you the, the full freedom to adjust the content as, as, as needed. Uh, any, any questions on just looking through some of the questions? Well, I do have a question. Is, if sure. If I want my student to, show, to actually show me the work, is there a way they can upload it? Mm, that's a great question. So instead of just searching through based upon a keyword, I can click on select libraries and then click on examples. And so I am now able to search for all the available problem types that are available within OWN. And so if I want a student to be able to, let's say, upload a question. So here's one for uploading a file. I can preview this and say, all right, you can supplement this so that a student completes a problem in the last question that they'll upload their, their work. And I recommend given these times having students to still complete their work in a notebook or in a piece of paper and at the end of it, just upload their files so that they can demonstrate to you that they've actually done the material. Um, another thing you can do with these particular problem types is having the ability to be able to have um, queued questions. So what we're doing right now, for example, let's say that you have a YouTube video that you're making or you're recording a, a Zoom session and you want your students to be able to answer a prompt on the 15 second marker. Well, you can queue it up so the 15 second they answer a question, the video resumes, they watch a little bit more, and then another question. So in this basic search that I did in terms of uh, question types, we have a whole catalog of different question types that have been used. You can sort by the ones that are most popularly used in our own courses, or you can look at some that have not been um, fully fleshed out, um, fully taken advantage of yet. So, um, and that's one of the services that we provide um so that you don't have to worry about that heavy lifting um, here's an example of a question that will allow you to be able to have students watch a video 
and then have them select this icon that says I have completed the section so that they can receive credit for watching the video. So you can get a rough estimation to see if the video is 10 minutes long. If they click on this icon in 30 seconds, it's very likely that they didn't watch the video. However, if it's on the 10 or 12 minute mark, you can get a rough estimation to see if they actually clicked on it or not. Uh, under normal circumstances, for each of the problems and assignments, you'll see here that there's a toggle that says create print version. So one of the, the, the unique things about OM in contrast to other major homework management systems is the ability to create a print version so that if you do have a student who may not have internet access at home, let's we'll say that given this time, they only have limited, limited data they can use and you wanted to email them the homework for this given assignment, you could create a print version and directly um, for cut and paste or you can print it in Word and then it, and it would upload or it would download like this. And then it would open directly like If they convert to Word, it would looks like our ability to do that right now has been halted. Let me make sure I can click on this so you can see an example. Uh, show just like this. So all the questions you normally select can pull up. So just want to make sure that you can see that, that 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 is an available option. I'm gonna pause it there to see if there, if there are any questions. Bill, do you have any questions? No, oh, look, it looks good. Um, okay. I, I did notice that I, I didn't see any geometry stuff in there. Do you guys have geometry courses? Great question. So our course materials are primarily designed for the higher education market, um, for the dev math, that we don't have um, the complete list of geometry courses. Um, we have some geometry content you can search for the material, but for the template courses where we do have a, a strong library list of questions, uh, it would be for, the, for these given courses. Gotcha. Well, what course are you looking to supplement? Is it a full geometry course or are you just looking for a Well, we have problems? a whole bunch. I, I told our, our department chair I'd check it out. There's, um, there's, a, there's you know, it's mostly algebra, um, trig, calculus, mm -hmm. and geometry. And geometry. And stats yeah, we, too, I guess, as well. But that's not a high priority. Got it. Well, Apologize, we, we don't have a, a complete, we have the all, all the courses that you had mentioned, excluding geometry. However, you can find some geometry um, examples in the question library. I did see some there. examples in there. Yes, I saw some questions. I just, uh, I noticed there wasn't a, but so this is geared more for college content though. I, I, for the higher education market, as right. Bridget had mentioned earlier, and our high enrollment 50 courses. So, but we're always looking to expand new course material. Um, just given this past year, our emphasis was to focus more on making sure our courses are accessible, which is why that integration with Desmos was, was, was so critical. Yeah. Hey, um, Dan, before you continue, I just want to um, check. Care, uh, we had someone else join us, Karen. Oh. Um, so I just want to make sure. I, I, I don't see that you're on video, so I'm not sure you could see all this. But let me know if you need anything, either during this or before. You can use the chat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I don't have great internet where I am, so I am just doing the audio, but I'm, I'm certainly listening. Okay, we'll send you a recording after. Yep, we will. Yes, thank I, you for I, joining, I, Karen. I, okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, so with, with that being said, oh, was there a question, Jesse? Yeah. If, I, if I decide to use Lumens, can Lumens be... I want to make sure I say it right. Well, see, I use Connect Maths right now for my classes. Mm -hmm. Now, what they do is in Canvas, I put a module for Connect Math and they click from there and go straight to Connect Math instead of just signing in independently. Is that, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So are, are you saying right now, do you have students in your course that are using Connect Math? Yes. They can, How, they can go, I put a module in Canvas and they just click Connect Math and it takes them straight to the Connect Math without logging in separately. You can do that with OM also, which okay. the way Dan is showing you right now is on its own, but he'll show you shortly how it looks mm -hmm. when you embed in Canvas. Okay, very good. Yep. So 
So you, yes, you do the ability and, and we'll show that in a few minutes, just so that you know, um, that it can live directly into your LMS, let's so say in Canvas or Blackboard. And students would never leave Canvas or Blackboard. Um, so that's one of the, so, so just to recap, we've reviewed the, the content of what you can find with our template courses. Our community courses that we didn't dive into, some of the courses may be referencing a PDF or a web page, and they don't include those activities that are built into the reading experience, and they also don't give you the ability to be able to restructure or modify the content. However, when we look at the secondary component, which is the homework management system, everything that we've gone over right now in regards to looking at the, the questions or even looking at the settings will all be identical. So we have some instructors who choose to use um, OM as the, the primary system. We're using the, the text and the material. And we also have some instructors just use OM um, independently um, as, a, as a textbook agnostic platform with materials that they made themselves. So with, with all of these settings, um, anything that you can think of in terms of making a particular assignment or assessment, designating the, the number of attempts, the penalties, how, how much they were, how much feedback that they actually receive, when they receive it, if the assignment needs to be password protected, if you are requiring students to have a, a certain amount of time to complete the assessment, if you want them to have the ability to be able to send you a direct message from the problem, one of the great things is, is that you can designate where it says add question links, show message instructor question about this link. Um, given that now we don't have the ability to be able to interact with students directly, it, it may be a great time to turn this checkbox on so that if you do want to have students message you about particular assignments, when they click on that individual link, it'll take a snapshot of the existing problem and send it directly to your um, um, own login so you can respond back. Uh, one of the great things you can use just to increase engagement with students. Or if you want to add your own resource, you can do that as well too. Um, designate if the, if the assignment counts in your gradebook or extra credit, et cetera. So all the things that, that we've covered here, including the, the late passes, right now we know that some students, they may not have the ability to be able to complete their assignments in a given time frame. And so instead of giving a student an individual extension on each assessment, you can assign students a certain number of tokens and designate which problems or which assignments to say, you can submit this assignment late, but if you do, you can use one of your five passes. And so with those late passes, you can determine if there's a penalty associated with it, or when they can use it, and how many they have. So I'm just gonna save this. And so all the settings and the changes, the great thing about OM is that if you decided to use OM today for your class that starts tomorrow or next week or when it's recurring session, when you're looking at a template course, the easiest thing to do is in the upper right hand corner, you can click on quick rearrange and then take a look from a 30,000 foot view, what modules are you going to be covering? And if you wanted to rename this to Algebra Essentials Part Two, you can rename that. If you decided that in this, fall, uh, this module itself that you don't cover half of these topics, you can rearrange or you can delete the assignments itself too. And so, just being able to look at this from a 30,000 foot view is, is helpful um, to see what you're planning on teaching, as well as on the left hand side where it says mass change and it shows dates. You can easily on one single page determine which assignments are gonna be due at what time, as well as being able to make a change to all of your assignments, whether you designate your settings for your quizzes and your homework assignments in one page as well too, where you select everything at once and then make those changes on the single instance. I'm going to pause right there to see if there are any questions around the uh, things we've things that we've just covered. Okay, so everything that, that we've gone over, excluding looking at the, the grade book where you have access to full data on each of your students. So if you are using a system like My Math Lab or Connect Math and you want to be able to see for yourself what are um, the grades, just so that you know, you can dive into each of the statistics for a student by simply clicking on, oops, um, isolate, and to look at the individual examples, and then dive into the into the statistics. But just so that you know, just for the, for the time that we have, we have together, I want to make sure that it's very clear that everything that we've done 
you have the ability to be able to embed this directly into your LMS. And when you do, you export your cartridge and it loads directly into Canvas and looks like this. And so all the individual hyperlinks and assignments will populate here. And so when a student clicks on an individual homework assignment, for example, it'll load directly in Canvas with their grades populating directly into Canvas. And from an instructor's viewpoint, if you wanted to be able to make a change um, to your course, you would click here where it says LTI home. And then you have the ability to follow the breadcrumb trail to go back in and make the same changes directly in Ohm. So the great thing is once you've integrated it once, you can make all the changes directly into Canvas without any restrictions. Uh, I'm gonna pause right there, see if there are any questions around our integration. Jesse, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Uh, uh, like in that section, exponents and scientific notation, mm -hmm. I don't cover scientific notation. I only cover mm -hmm. exponents. I will have to either tell them not to cover it or I will be able to take it off completely. Correct. So for the, the problems itself, so um, if you, for any of the problems, as I mentioned before, you can go in and click on the, the homework and decide for yourself which problems you want, and which ones you don't. So you can always re remove a problem. You can add the problem, however. Well, I, want, I, don't want, I want to remove the section that has anything, anything to do with scientific notation. Hmm. So if you want to re remove the section, I would recommend just to not, to not reference that link um, yourself. That way you have, because you have access to the whole book, you don't, wouldn't have to include it. So just, just think of these, each of these hyperlinks as individual pages. So if you're not gonna be covering an individual section, you may decide to not include any of the hyperlinks for this page or not. So um, right now, when this situation comes up, what is your, what is your current process, Jesse, if you're, not be, if you're not covering a section? Do you just have to skip over a section or? Well, yeah, right now in, my, in Canvas, I let them know exactly what they're covering. Mm -hmm. They don't actually go read it and go over it. I don't want them to waste time reading scientific notation because they don't have to. Mm -hmm. But if I do lumens, I'm gonna have to. I guess I have to still tell them specifically: do not cover scientific notation. And you can do that. Yes. So the same practice. Once you've embedded directly in your LMS, you can do that. So really, it'll, it'll be up to you to decide the flexibility of, of what you change and how you do it. Um, the last thing that I'll that I'll cover uh, today is the resources that link to, and I'll have to log out and log back in so you see. Um, we have built in and embedded our Desmos interactivities that you can assign um, or and, and use as either uh, a mini lecture, a self-paced activity, um, whatever that may be. And so here on the left-hand side, you'll see that we've taken the time to construct individual problems where we're asking students to be able to interact with the material. And this is an example of just domain and range practice where we're asking students to y equals 2x plus 5 to see can they hit these spots. And so they're, they're gonna be formative exercises, so they're not gonna be completely graded, but the intention of this is that you have a list of, for a college algebra course, for example, 30 that you can choose to assign um, at any given point to use as a supplementary lecture component, um, if that's something that's important to you. We have intermediate algebra coming out, I believe in May, and then for stats, they'll be available to use for the fall term. Um, with, that, with that, I just wanna make sure that um, things that we've covered i don't want to overwhelm anyone with diving into the reporting and analytics that you can find within our grade book and our assignments because as i mentioned before you can look at all the, the the metrics for assignments just by clicking on the stats icon for example to see how many people clicked on it when they log in etc but today's session was meant to be used as a overarching theme um, to cover um, everything about all so i'm, I'm going to pause for there and see if there are any other questions about Ohm today. Not right now. Because I, I, I like the part where you showed me that 
if I decide to use lumens, it sends it directly into Canvas and shows the section it, that they have to cover. That's what I was correct. wondering was how, how, how would they see it? Mm -hmm. You actually showed me that already. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, if you already are using, um, let's say, Connect Math, for example, and you already have your students um, using that, that 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 material, if you're if you're using it in its current term, uh, this is something that I would recommend to to not integrate at this given point in time because it would replace your existing gradebook and any of the existing work would be replaced. However, if you're not, this would be a great opportunity. We just need to get in touch with your LMS administrator to make sure that we have the right tool put in place so then it, it can accept the integration. And you're at Houston, right? Houston CC? Yes. Yeah, okay. So yes, we, we definitely have the ability to be able to. One of the, the, the things that we cover is the implementation. And so if you have questions, you can always reach out to me directly um, for how that works. And so that's the main reason why we were asking so many questions from, from you about what you're currently using right now, because we want to make sure that your students have a positive experience. Now, moving forward, we can do all of it, whether you're the logging directly or directly in Canvas, but we just want to make sure that things are working well. Well, let me ask y'all something. Could sure. You, are, you, are, you were with Lumens directly, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Has HCC Math Department allowed us to not use Connect Math and use Lumens instead? Um, my understanding is that I'm not sure for which course, but I know it's uh, last time I heard it was they were reviewing, but what we'll do after this call, Dan's going to follow up like he mentioned, but he will also include in the email our colleague who covers Houston CC so that she'll give, she'll be her name is Erin. She'll be able to give you details about that because she's the one that works directly with either the committee or faculty and mm -hmm. all that. Okay, because I have a, I have a class starting on Monday and I need to get that class ready immediately. Yeah, which so course I, is it I, for? Intermediate algebra. Okay. And if I'm going to use it, I need to get started soon. But if I can't replace it for Connect Math, then I'm really not going to be able to use it this time. Yeah, we'll put you in touch. Dan, Dan is great about following up right away. So I'm sure he'll get follow up right after this call and include you with Erin. And we'll ping her and let her know to respond right away too. Thank you. We'll and that. Karen, I think you might be at HCC. Else. Oh no, you're Arkansas, maybe actually. Um, so never know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm great. Arkansas. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so we're actually right at time, so we just want to be, you know, um, respectful of that. If you want to stay on, um, I'm just going to share a couple minutes, a couple other resources, which we will send over email. But we understand if you know you you're no longer you know you have to go because I know we're a little bit over time. Um, so very quickly, um, in terms of, and we'll send you these links. Um, okay, actually, I'll skip this. There's three resources that I do recommend, you know, just having, you know, take a quick look at and let it, you know, and, and forward on, and we'll send you these links. One of them is our transition page. So any instructors who are interested in either exploring or moving to Lumen um, mid-semester as we transition everything online, you can go to this page and find basically like how to review our content, how to see the courseware, as well as how to try it. Um, you two don't have to worry about that. You've you know, sat through this, you're gonna get a follow-up. But um, just wanted to share it in case you wanna share it when you get the link with any colleagues. We do also have this resources with teach, uh, for teaching with Lumen. So should you decide or are able to um, use Lumen um, sometime soon, this is a great place to go for just short videos on how to get started or tips, um, as well as some faculty um, talking about what they like best about Ohm and a Waymaker, which is our other courseware. And finally, access to our blog. And I would say, you know, we're putting up resources as we either build them or find out about them and you know in real time basically but one of the things we did last week was we posted this blog post it's um, recommended resources for teaching online so the first set of resources you'll see are from lumen so things you know about accessibility communication tools and tips whatnot all with lumen courseware but if you scroll down there's actually a ton of other helpful links um, to reputable sources that we've curated as a team that may be helpful for you as you move your courses online. So there's, you know, Canvas, Blackboard, D2L, Brightspace, Moodle resources that we've linked out to, um, you know, ADA compliance for online course assignment, all these resources that you, you or your colleagues may find helpful during this time. 
So we'll send you those links in case you do find them helpful and you can always find them on our blog. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to respond to the follow-up email that Dan will be sending. Um, but we really wanted to just say thank you for joining the webinar. Um, hopefully we've answered your questions and shown you a little bit of what you can do should you decide to use Lumen. And if you have any questions, let us know. And we really wish you and your students the best right now during this time. Stay healthy and good luck with your courses. But more importantly, hopefully you and your family and students will be healthy and safe. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Dan. We'll, we'll be in touch shortly. Right, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.